We're ready to uh, take up our meeting again. I'll read to you a familiar text here from John chapter 9. Jesus' healing of the blind man. You remember the occasion. Sometime during the last six months or so of Jesus' public ministry in Jerusalem, probably at the Feast of Tabernacles, sometime in that time of the year, sometime close to the, to the feast time. And they came upon this blind man and the disciples questioned Jesus about the source of his blindness. And the master told them that it was for the glory of God. All of this had been calculated. All of this had been planned. Now you think of this man 40 years, born blind, 40 years, uh, not able to provide uh, for himself in the, in, the, in the normal sense of his personal needs, family needs, uh, we don't know anything about his family background other than he was still connected to his parents probably. So it was unlikely that he, that he had a, a wife and family. They're not mentioned. And he was not able to support them. And here came the Nazarene walking along. It's likely that he'd heard about him. He recognized the man. He said, the man they called Jesus made clay, put it on my eyes, told me to go wash. I did, and I returned seeing. Now, of course, this was, there was this public confrontation then. Uh, people knew him. He was familiar to people in the city of Jerusalem. They'd been used to seeing him there for years and years and years. And now here he was, walking around like one of them, able to see. And, uh, of course, the inhabitants of Jerusalem were certainly familiar with the Galilean rabbi controversial. Some of them may have been part of the crowd earlier that had picked up stones to stone him. Back in uh, the incident recorded in chapter 8 where they were talking about Abraham. So they brought the man before the Pharisees and had a trial so to speak or had an investigation which did not turn out well from their perspective. You were born entirely in sin, and are you going to teach us? And they threw him out. So we'll pick it up there. Jesus heard they had cast him out, verse 35. And when they found him, he said to them, he said to him, Do you believe in the Son of God? Some translations say the Son of Man. He answered and said, Who is he, Lord, that I may believe in him? Jesus said to him, You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. Then he said, Lord, I believe, and he worshiped him. You have both seen him. Now, you know the, the sequence of events here. The man had not seen, physically seen, Jesus. When they asked him, where is he? He said, I don't know. And, and you know from here, he didn't recognize him. He had not seen him physically. But Jesus said, you have both seen him. And it is he who is talking with you. It's kind of amazing that he didn't recognize the voice. Although we don't know what Jesus said to him other than go to the pool of Siloam. It, it, it's likely that the human reaction was he was so taken. The man was so taken with his new sight that for a moment the memory of the voice, which is his memory is probably pretty good considering that he had to use it to, to move around and so forth and know to to be able to function the little bit that he could. But he was so taken by his newfound sight, the memory of the sound of that voice just escaped him for a minute. And here he was talking to him, and until Jesus said, you have both seen him and he's talking to you now, then, see, then, then he knew. You've both seen him. Of course, the master is talking about a different kind of seeing here. It's a different kind of seeing. Sister Barb, in her uh, opening this morning, uh, alluded to this, or not alluded, but spoke to the, uh, spoke from the illusions about this, illusions of seeing the unseen. Well, this man did. He was not able to see, but he was able to see. He had likely heard of this man from Nazareth. He knew the man they called Jesus was his answer to those who said, how do you now see? The man they call Jesus. Made clay, anointed my eyes, 
told me to go to Siloam and wash, and I did, and I came back seeing. So he was familiar with the man on some level. Now we're talking about a new level. Do you believe in the Son of God, the Son of Man? Same person we know. Two different perspectives of the same individual. Do you believe in the Son of God, the Son of Man? See, this, this is where the glory of God comes in, of course. For Jesus was doing more than just healing his physical vision. He did do that. But he's doing more than that. He's bringing him to faith. The investigator said, what do you say about the man? He is a prophet. Didn't hesitate one bit. When they accused him of, you're his disciples, we're disciples of Moses. He didn't deny it, did he? He was a disciple of his now. And now at this point then, the master comes back to to uh, clarify the man's vision, if you want to say it that way, to reintroduce himself. You have both seen him, and it is he who is talking with you. And he worshipped him. Lord, I believe. I believe. So the man's vision, his perception, his insight... You know, it wasn't just seeing, it was insight. That's what Jesus was after. That's where the glory of God came in, was when the man had insight. Well, brethren, I would call you upward to the insight then, the place of insight that God gives us in the revelation of his will, his purpose that is in Christ Jesus. We've spoken of these things this morning. Our Bible lesson this morning, Brother Bob led. We, we probed and we searched and we, we uh, uh, handled these things back and forth and back and forth and we gained insight. We gained a greater perception and a greater appreciation of these things about helping the weak, helping those who are weak. We recognized things that we'd, not, that we'd seen before and we extended ourselves, we pressed in a little bit further, and we've expanded our insight or understanding into these uh, instructions and the apostolic guidance that the apostle was giving these readers. And we know that some of the difficulty the people there in Thessalonica were having. Uh, in the second letter, he addresses those who'd, who'd quit working and we're just lounging around waiting for Jesus to come back. (laughs) Paul said, hey, hey, if you're not going to work, you're not going to eat. You let the Lord take care of his time when he returns. It's not going to come for a while anyway. You get back to work. Get back to work, see. This was strengthening some weakness as well. See, they needed some insight about this. Well, here are the masters. He's right at the kernel of the insight here, isn't he? These, the instructions that the apostles would later give a lot further down the line and so forth. This, this is the cornerstone of all insight right here. Do you believe in the Son of Man? Do you believe in the Son of God? That's the cornerstone of all other insight. You're not going to have any other insight until you are able to take hold of that truth and that reality, believing in the Son of Man. So, brethren, I'll call you up higher then to believe these things that he's revealed about himself. Let's pray together as we begin our second hour then. Father, we bless you.